Welcome Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBH Show YouTube video. You're here with your host, GBHL Damien. Unbelievable, right? Yeah, um, as anyone who's watched the Q&A this week will know, uh, the guys have seen fit to give me the GBHL status. So uh, thank you very much, guys. Um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful, momentous achievement in my life. Um, my wife said she can now love me entirely. My mum and dad told me that they've never been more proud of me, so it's, um, it's an exciting moment for, for me and my life. Um, some of those things may not be true. So, uh, today we're going to be doing a unboxing. And uh, the reason for this is that um, I've just been finishing some more is variable conversions. If you're on the Facebook group or on the One Ring, you might have seen some kind of updates. But um, I've been converting some, as I talked about in some past videos, I've been converting some Grim Hammers into Warriors Variable. So I've just finished some of them and I'll um, show you a couple of them. I'm just going to put this light on because I think it'll, it'll make it go incredibly bleached, but it'll allow you to see them better. And I'll show you the figures. So, hopefully now. That should be nice and in focus. So we've got these guys that were Grim Hammers, have been converted with spears from eBay and Warrior Warriors Variable shields into um, Warriors Variable. That guy, that this dude, I think looks pretty cool. That pose. There's some poses that um, really lend themselves to kind of nice conversions from the Grim Hammers. I think that's there we go. So they look quite cool. It takes a bit of um, fiddly conversion works to kind of uh, remove the weapons and drill through the hands. And there's this guy here as well, he's like a, um, I quite like this pose, it's kind of like a um, Spartan or something, kind of running forward, almost as if he's about to throw the spear. So I've done um, I've done 10 of these conversions in the past, but I've just finished off um, another 8 of them. And so, um, as a result of that, I now need some um, guys to lead them, and I thought I'd treat myself to a character or two. So. I am going to paint up next one of these two bad boys. Let's turn this off now, don't need it at the moment. I'll light up in a minute, I'm sure. Uh, we have Thor and Thrain. Now, the reason I'm doing this is um, in the, some of you may have seen the Unbox in the Box video, me and Jamie went through my big pile of stuff and we touched upon Thor and Thrain then. And um, we had a look at the Thor, the Thrain miniature and discussed them a bit, but um, we haven't unboxed the Thor on the channel, so we thought that would be quite good to go now. So um, here he is. It's um, Thor, the last king under the mountain. He's uh, 12 pounds, he's fine cast, and I think the miniature itself is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to uh, cut this over with a knife, as always. Be very careful, use adult supervision, and so forth. So um, this model, I remember it coming out last, um, came out a year and a half ago, February 2013 I believe, and it's gorgeous. And I think a lot of people immediately were saying that Thrall was one of the greatest uh, miniatures in the range, um, definitely one of the Hobbit miniatures. Um, and I completely agree with that, and I've been looking forward to painting this guy for some time. So uh, let's have a look at him under the light. There's the sprue as you get it. So you can see he comes in three parts, you got him there, it's kind of his head and main body part there. You've then got this kind of slightly bizarre bit that's a cloak and the sword, so that's his uh, left arm and the cloak attached to one piece. And then up the top you've got his shield, it's a very cool uh, shield. And you can hopefully see, let's see how much detail we can get out of this, but the head is absolutely stunning. The detail on the um, on the beard is really really lovely. On the back of that, there's probably nothing because it's waiting for the cloak to be snipped in. So um, yeah, that's the that's the sprue. Um, I might actually cut this off. Should I cut this off? No, probably not. I won't. I won't bore you with that. Um, so yeah, that's the um, that's the Thor miniature. Having a look at it here, it's um, it's great. The fine cost is really good. There's no um, there's no bubbles that I can see or anything like that. There's no issues with it. I've heard a lot of people have had um, problems with his sword, and his sword does feel very very flimsy, but it um, it's it's not bent or anything. And overall, this just looks like a great um, a great little cast. This guy, and I'm really looking forward to painting him or Thrain. I haven't decided whether I'm going to be doing him or Thrain next, um, but I'm definitely going to be doing one of them. Possibly I'll do them alongside each other. 
So, um, Thor, let's have a little chat about his profile. He is um, 140 points, which is something I'll come back to in a minute. And then he's basically um, a dwarf king with loads of threes. So he's what you'd expect really, fight six, um, strength four, defense eight, uh, three attacks, three wounds, uh, courage six, might three, will three, fate three. So it's a very, no, he's not fate three, sorry. I, that's a lie, he's fate one. We'll get onto that in a minute. Um, so it's a good profile for sure. Um, there's a few issues with him. Uh, in his profile, he's, defo he's des described as having a two-handed, I believe it's an ax. Um, it's a two-handed weapon of some sort. Now that's been FAQ'd to match his appearance here. So in the official FAQ he now has a sword and a shield, which is great. Um, but unfortunately they didn't give him the defence bonus. So he's defence he remains defence eight as Thrain is, even though he's got a shield, so he should really be defence nine, which is a bit of an annoying a bit of an annoying issue. Um, but at least he can he can faint should you want to, and he can shield should you want to, I suppose, rather than having a two handed weapon, which is obviously another um hangover from the old days of the um, the early script readings that they went they went through for the Unexpected Journey book, which is obviously what led to kind of Azog's appearance and the trolls being the wrong way around and Thrain having a two-handed axe and so on and so forth. Um, he's also got two special rules, which are one is fearless, which is um, standard rule, so he always passes courage test, which is great. That means if, you, if he's your leader, he's never going to roll those snake eyes and run, which is handy. He'll also charge anything. And he also has the Arkenstone, um, which means that he passes fate rolls on 3 plus instead of 4 plus. Now, the benefit of that rule, of course, is that he's got a much higher chance of passing the fate roll. Um, you know, 3 plus is 66% chance instead of 50% uh, chance. The downside, of course, is he's only got one fate. So if he rolls a 1 or a 2, he's still in trouble. Um, the other special rule of the Arkenstone is that if he passes his fate roll on a 4 or more, he gets the fate point for free. So potentially, you can't kill him. Potentially, he could always roll a four plus for his fate fat, his fate roll, and stay alive forever, which is very handy. But with only having one fate, it's a real everything or nothing. As soon as he rolls a one or a two, the rule means nothing. All you have to burn your might to make it work. So it's a good rule, but it's potentially flawed. You know, it could mean he has limitless fate. Fate. It could mean he has zero fate or one fate, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that rule. The big issue with Thor though is his points value. That um, for that profile, at 140 points is just far too much. It's exactly the same with Thrain. Um, Thrain's the same points, 140, and he's just they're far, far too expensive. If you go and look at um, a dwarf king from the Free People's Book, um, it's a very good basis to work out what other characters should cost. So like um, any a king of men is good for men. Basic captains, any any unnamed heroes are generally quite good ways of working out what named heroes should cost. And the dwarf king, if you if you add on all his all Thor's stats um, on top of the the improvements over a dwarf king, then he he ends up. They should cost five points each. By the way, um, most people know this that for a character, a stat and a special rule cost five points each. Um, then he ends up costing, Thor should cost, I think it's 110 points. Now, bear in mind, that's him paying for everything. So, paying for all his stat increases and all his special rules, he should be 110. And when you consider, you're paying 5 points for a shield, and he doesn't get the defence bonus in that. You're paying 5 points for him to be fearless, which, whilst a good rule, on a Courage 6 model, isn't as handy as on a Courage 3 model. Yeah, so that rule's not great. And you're paying five points for his Arkenstone special rule, which might do nothing. So there's, he should cost 110 points, and 15 of those points are a bit iffy in terms of whether or not they're worthwhile, um, or whether or not they'll actually be handy in the game to you. It's a bit of a problem, but absolute most he should be 110 points, and he costs 140. So you can sort of see the issues there. I mean, 30 points is a is a huge discrepancy in terms of. Um, if you're playing for anything beyond pure fun. And I think you, you, the proof of this, um, if we look at all the events over the last year and a half since the rule came out, I've never seen Thraw or Thrain at a tournament. No, not once. Thrain suffers a um, similar issue. He's 140 points. And when you take into his 
all his characteristics in, he should be about 120, something like that. So he's 20 points too much. So if you take both Thwart and Thrain, as you'd probably want to for the theme, you're looking at um, easily, you're looking at somewhere in the region of 50 points too much, which is, you know, 50 points is another five dwarfs or Barlin into your force, which will make a huge difference to your army. So unfortunately, these guys, whilst they're... Um, Whilst they're brilliant, they're great profiles and they're beautiful models, uh, they're just not viable for competitive games, um, unfortunately. So, if you want to take them um, you know, in fun games, at home, for friends, for the fluff, great. But you'll never see these guys at a tournament, I think, um, unless the person's just going for pure fluff. So, um, that's a bit of a shame. So, the decision for an um, army thrall player is who to take as their leader. And when you've got Thorin, who's... Um, 115 points of all his gear. That's 25 points cheaper than both Thrall and Thrain. It's just a no-brainer. And you have to get to the point where, for them to be competitive, Thrall and Thrain, you'd have to really have to debate um, whether or not you take Thrall or Thrain or Thorin. And at the moment, you just don't. It's a complete no-brainer, unfortunately. You just take Thorin and you ignore the other two. Now, I would argue that if Thrall was 110 points, and if Thrain was 120 points, you'd really consider it. You'd then have a real choice on your hands. And more importantly, once if you did decide to go Thorin, once you picked him, you could then well um, be justified in picking Thor and or Thrain as well um, and bringing them along to your next game um, all as part of the same force. So that's uh, that's the problem for me with Thor and Thrain. Um, of course, it's not really a problem for me at this stage because that's not why I'm collecting them. Oh, I love the aesthetic of the uh, Army of Thor. And I love the models, and that's why I'm collecting them, painting them, and I will be taking them to a tournament. That is my pledge. Um, as many of you know, I'm attempting to win the league this year, and so I'm going along to tournaments to be competitive. But as soon as, um, as soon as I, it might well be next year. Um, but as soon as there's a tournament where I don't have to be competitive, um, and God knows I won't be next year, um, I'll be bringing this army along. Hopefully, it'll be a 600 point one, um, because I've worked out you can get Thor, Thrain, Thorin and 24 dwarfs, which I've nearly got painted now, um, for about 600 points. So that'll be a cool little force to use. As I said, I don't think it'll be particularly competitive, but um, but there we go. While we're here, we'll have a look at um, Thrain as well. Let me just flick the light on for you. We did have a look at this um, during the Unbox in the Box video, but um, while we're here, we might as well have got it. Again, it's a lovely sculpt, lots and lots of detail on there. You can see, really, really nice. Um, around the back, he's then got. Where is it? There we go. There's his um, cloak. It's upside down at the moment. Um, Two-handed hammer, and the back of Thrain there. He's got this kind of big woolen cloak on. So another really, really nice sculpt. Um, so yeah, that's Thor and Thrain. Um, they're not the most uh, competitive models in the game, but. Um, Sadly, that's the way it is. It's not something that's going to be a few and it's just something we'll have to live with. So, um, I'm excited about um, getting them assembled. I'm excited about um, painting them. Have you guys used them? Have you played with them? Um, if so, if anyone has had some success with them, I'd love to hear about it to give me a bit of uh, a boost. But um, if not, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Support your Hobbit hobby, and happy strategy battle gaming.